Hey guys, welcome to Let's Learn C++ Lesson 2.4. Today we're going to learn about the switch statement. Now, the switch statement is pretty much the same thing as an if structure, just with a little bit of difference, and it always assumes um, that it's going to be equal to something, instead of like greater than or less than or something like that. It always assumes equal to. So, with the switch statement, you can see that we have an output yeah, statement that says enter one, two, or three, and it gives you a space to output it, or sorry, to input it. And we have a variable which I put in the wrong spot, and I should have right here an integer called x, some number called x. And I want to take some input with cn, and we're going to save it in our variable x. And then we have this strange structure right here of randomness, right? That you have no idea what it is. Well, this is a switch structure. So, what we do is we write down switch. And then we have the name of a variable here. And what this does is it assumes that, that x is going to be equal to some value. So, excuse me. So, a switch statement cannot be used to say as, as long as uh, x is less than some number greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, that kind of stuff. It assumes equal to. So, what this says is switch x is equal to some number that's going to be a case down here. And then we open up our set bracket and close it down here, and everything else is going to be in between it. So, the way to get different cases is we say case. Case 1 means x is equal to 1. And then we put a colon. Then we go down to the next line and say uh, what happens if, if x is equal to 1. So, this colon in this break statement is, is acting as your opening and closing brackets. The colon is your opening bracket, and the break statement is your closing bracket. So, uh, this comment is what it would look like with a an if statement, just like that. So what this is saying is if x is equal to 1, then do this, then see out you entered 1, and then break from the, from the, uh, 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 structure. I can't put the word with it. <laughs> um, so it's going to completely break out of the entire switch structure. And it's it's not going to go to the next one or anything else. It's just going to get out of It's just going to go to what's past this right here. So then the, uh, we have a second case, case 2. And what this is saying is if x is equal to 2, then say you enter 2 and then break from it. And then what this one is saying is if x is equal to 3, because it says case 3, and then break from it after you say you entered 3. Now, suppose that x was a character, and it said enter a, b, or c. Then we would change uh, case 1 to case a with the apostrophes around it. And that would be if, if x is equal to a. And if it's asking for also b, then you would have b in, in, in apostrophes here, and then C in here. And then if, if it was asking for, um, say, a floating point number, like a float or a double, then you would have 2.4 or something. Just um, just whatever it's asking for, the case is what it's asking for. So case 1, case A, case 2, uh, case 3, case C, etc., etc., so on and so forth. So now the default is one case in and of itself, except these cases up here, case 1, case 2, and case 3, is like if, else, if, else, if. Now the default is just like saying else. There's no condition whatsoever. So th this is exactly like saying else, and then opening it with the colon, and then saying please try again because they entered the wrong value. And then you'd say uh, break to break from the structure. So that's pretty much how switch statements work. Let's go ahead and run it real quick so I can show you how it works. Enter one, two, or three. One. Oops. One. Oh crap! Sorry, I forgot to pause it. Enter one, two, or three. One. And it says you entered one. Now we run it again. Enter one, two, or three. Two. You entered two. Run it again. Enter one, two, or three. Three. You entered three. 
Now, let's see what happens if I enter anything else besides 3. Uh, let's say 7. Please try again, because it didn't see that any of these cases were applicable to the number 7, so it went to the default, and it did that. Now, you can also do it where there is no default. Just whenever you get an incorrect value, let's see what happens. For 1, 2, or 3, let's enter 5. As you can see, nothing happens. It just doesn't do anything. So I find it best to always include the default, just so uh, in, in case uh, somebody enters the wrong value, it, it can be like a, a, a troubleshooting catch or something. So uh, that's switch statements. Now we have two more lessons in Chapter 2, maybe three, depending on how uh, the last lesson turns out. I might have to break it into two lessons. Uh, we'll see. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Remember to follow me on Twitter. I will be posting updates on videos and all that stuff and giving tips and everything and, you know, just that kind of stuff. So, follow me on Twitter and thank you for watching.